Hold the ball in your hand and drop it. When you release it from your hand, its speed is zero. On the way down, its speed increases. The longer it falls, the faster it travels. You can say that the ball is accelerating. Let's throw the ball upwards. On the way up, its speed will decrease until it stops and reverses the direction. Decreasing speed is also considered as acceleration. If you throw the ball horizontally and notice how its horizontal velocity gradually becomes more and more vertical. Since acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with time and velocity is a vector quantity, this change in direction is also considered as acceleration. The acceleration of ball was a result of gravity. Gravity was pulling the ball down. This is acceleration due to gravity. But what are the factors that affect this acceleration due to gravity? If you take a ball and paper which are having identical mass, they seem to fall at different speed. Acceleration of ball is more than that of paper. If we repeat the same activity by crumpling the paper into a ball-like shape and release again, then their accelerations are identical. Air resistance played a role in slowing the paper down before crumbling. If we eliminate the air resistance by performing this activity in vacuum, both objects will fall with same acceleration. Any object that is being acted upon only by the force of gravity is said to be in a state of free fall. Free falling objects do not encounter air resistance. The generally accepted value of g, that is acceleration due to gravity, is 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the average over the entire surface of Earth. On Earth, this value varies with latitude and altitude. The acceleration due to gravity is greater at the poles than the equator. It is greater at sea level than atop Mount Everest. We can use FET simulation for projectile motion to visualize the effect of air resistance. When a 50 gram golf ball is launched from the cannon with initial speed of 15 meters per second from the height of 15 meters, it touches the ground at a distance of 26.2 meters. It takes 1.75 seconds to reach the ground. This is in the absence of any air resistance. Let us enable air resistance and launch the ball again. Ball touched the ground slightly shorter and it also took longer time, about 1.78 seconds, due to the presence of air resistance. We saw the effect of air resistance on free falling objects. In all our calculations related to motion, we ignore the air resistance and assume that object is falling solely under the influence of gravity. Power is the rate at which work is done or the rate at which energy is transferred from one place to another or transformed from one type into another. As a physical concept, power requires both a change in the physical system and a specified amount of time in which the change occurs. This is distinct from the concept of work which is only measured in terms of a net change in the state of the physical system. The same amount of work is done when carrying a load up the flight of stairs whether the person carrying it walks or runs, but more power is needed for running because the work done is in a shorter amount of time. The dimension of power is energy divided by time. Unit of power is watt, that is joules per second. A joule per second is called a watt in honor of the Scottish mechanical engineer James Watt. Watt is most famous for inventing an improved steam engine in the years around 1770. The rate at which a light bulb converts electrical energy into light and heat is measured in watts. Here is a 25 watt bulb. It means this bulb converts 25 joules of electric potential energy into heat and light every second. With this 60 watt bulb, more energy is converted per second and hence the bulb is brighter. Power was a new way to compare his engines to the machines they were designed to replace, horses. Therefore, one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. Ram and Sham are trying to lift a bucket of water weighing 10 kg by 1 meter. Work done can be calculated with the formula W is equal to m into g into h, where m is the mass of the bucket, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and h is the height. Work done in this case will be 10 into 9.8 into 1, that is 98 joules. If Ram lifts the bucket in one second, then Ram's power can be defined as 98 watts, while Sham does it in two seconds. Hence, his power can be defined as 49 watts. 
we can say that Ram has more power than Sham. Remember that power is the rate at which someone and something does work. Challenge. Let us assume that your mass is 60 kilograms. You run up 100 stairs, each 20 centimeter high in 28 seconds at a constant velocity. How much work do you do against gravity? We discussed about free fall and experienced the definition of power with simple examples. It is the rate at which work is being done. Do try similar activities to know more about power.